Turn to your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20. We've been talking about looking into God's perfect law and the Ten Commandments and seeing our lack. Wow. We stand on this uneven scale. We gaze up on what offsets us in the character of God and we say, what is it that we lack? But most importantly, who is that on the other side that creates such an imbalance between us and him? And so our goal today is to look into two commandments. Woo, it's heavy lifting today. As we observe and interpret our deficits, I want to begin first with the character of God on display. And so before we begin, can I just tell you that I've also struggled with confidence this whole week in preaching this message. Because if we talk about stealing and lying, I want you to know I grew up stealing and lying. And so I feel like Barabbas today talking to you about how not to murder. Because that's all I've done. But I'm so thankful that I felt like this week the Lord just cleansed me of some things and forgave me of some things and allowed me to forgive myself of some things and to walk in a newness. And so... Let's pray. Father in heaven, I ask you, as we get into your word, I pray. Lord, help us to not breeze past the word because it's so easy, Father, when we don't feel like it applies to our life or we don't want it to apply to our life. I ask God today, oh, Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would search the hearts of men and women today. We want to be more like you, God, and that doesn't happen until you sanctify us. And so sanctify us by your word today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15 through 16 says, You shall not steal. And you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. I want you to know first off is that God cannot steal. Neither can he lie. But he cannot steal because there's nothing that's not his. <laughs> Everything belongs to him. But what I want you to know is that even greater than the fact is God's love is so great that he can't help but give. God's not a God who's fighting stealing. He's a God who's trying not to give too much. In fact, you think about it, God loved us so much that even when he didn't need us before all of creation, his heart was so compelled to give that he created mankind so that he might express his desire to give. For God so loved the world that he gave. For this is the opposite of taking is giving. Neither can God lie. For in the beginning there was nothing. And then he said, let there be light. And there was light. So whenever God speaks, what we see is that he calls realities and truths that are never in existence into existence. So therefore God cannot lie because when he says something, all of creation all of truth and principle reality have to align up to him because he is truth. And so everything is just the effect of him. And so God manifests love to us in that whatever he said shall be forever. We know that when God says something, we can hang on to it forever because it is forever lasting. It is a perpetual promise his character is unchanging so whatever God says something to you when we read it in the word we know that that will never change because it's tied to his unchanging or what they call immutable character of God thankfully this is who our God is unfortunately it is not the same with his creation we all have some point lied in our life if you've ever been in trouble with your parents, you lied in your life. <laughs> no, mom. That was my sister. <laughs> that was not me. And perhaps you've probably stolen too. Because that's what happens when you lie, you steal. When you steal, you lie. You know how that works. Stealers lie and liars steal. And so this morning, uh, I want you to know, I know that about you because back in my neighborhood we grew up in we would say game recognizes game but you may understand it as this it takes one to know one and so i've talked to some of y'all i know some of you guys are liars and thieves i could tell by, by talking to you i'm just you're like pastor scott you know 
Well, hey, we're just in church. We're all going to get prayed through today anyway. So let's talk about what that is. What, what is stealing? Stealing is taking something that belongs to someone else without the right permission to do so. In fact, stealing is forcibly or deceitfully appropriating the fruit of someone else's labor for yourself. It's a definition we want to return to, so let me just say it again. Stealing is forcibly or deceitfully appropriating the fruit of someone else's labor for yourself. Lying is speech that misrepresents the truth using fabrication, misrepresentation, or disinformation. We've heard that word often a lot recently. Fabrication is where you make something out of thin air, just poof, right? And misrepresentation is where you change the intent of the lie, or you change the intent of the conversation, or change the intent of the word. It's where we get those little white lies, those small little lies, or, or we call them technical truths, you know? Technical truth. Uh, you know, a technical truth is when someone texts you and says, uh, are you coming? And you reply back, I'm on my way as you roll out of the bed. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way, you know. I'm getting, you know, on. And, and so, you no, you're not almost there. You, you're, you're late is what you are. But technically, I'm not lying. In fact, three of the most common lies in America are categorized as misrepresentations. This is, this is 92% of the people say this, I'm fine. How you doing? I'm fine. I told you y'all lie when y'all came in this morning. We asked, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine, Brother Scott. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm doing just good. You know how we church folks play. Uh, or maybe, maybe when it comes Christmas time, you go, oh, I love this present. It's, it's what I always wanted. You lie. You know. Because nobody appreciates those uh, um, a bag of underwear and socks for Christmas. You know, like, come on. <laughs> or how about this? Uh, <clears throat> hey, boss. I'm sick. <laughs> I can't come in. I'll be right there. I can't come. I'm just feeling really bad today. I just can't make it in. These are the three most lies. Sometimes we say stuff like this. I got stuck in traffic. Uh, or uh, my phone died. Or I would never lie to you. Or maybe even this. Maybe even this. And, and don't, don't hate me. But sometimes that little, that little bitty lie that shows up comes in a, a, a lie like this. Oh, baby, you look good in that dress. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have never lied ever in that regard. I promise, babe. Lord is my witness. Scouts honor. Whatever. I'll put my hand on the Bible. I promise you. And then there's dis disinformation. Disinformation is when you mislead by presenting lies mixed with truth. We also call this fake news or alternative truth. Uh, we see this back in the garden when the serpent said, did God really say? Did God really say? He uses a little bit of lie, a little bit of truth. So let me just kind of explain where some of those things. I'm going to try to abbreviate my sermon today as much as possible. So hang in there with me. Uh, in our world, we see a lot of lies at work. In fact, I can tell you that there's three types of lies that are always at work in our, in our world. And, uh, and that is first is there's the humorous lie. Everybody knows that's, that's baloney, right? We all know that's not the truth. We laugh. We tongue in cheek. We make fun. But we all know it's not truthful. And so, therefore, it's not really a harmful lie. But there is a harmful lie that intends to do damage. That's a bad lie, obviously. But then there's, there's a helpful lie. There's a helpful lie, you know? And that helpful lie is the one we use a lot. Like, does this dress make me look fabulous. Um, it's what I've always wanted. You know, those types of things. Uh, and then for you and I, there's also these types of stealing in our world. Now, you, there's, there, are, there is a, a forcibly mugging type of stealing. I hope you've never been a part of that. When I was young, I, um, I, I, walk, I got out of my truck one time and I had two guys pointing a couple guns at me and they took my, took my vehicle from me. I'd be very angry. I didn't realize. I thought I'd be scared. I was really, really angry because I realized something was being taken from me. Uh, there's a forcible mugging. Then, then there's people who steal influence by taking credit of another as if it should have went to you. Have you ever had that happen before? You did, you did the work. You did the labor. You did all the extra. Then somebody come along and took all the credit. Uh, and they may take a concept, an idea, or the ability to, to recognize that. And then there's, a, then there's stealing people. We call that kidnapping. In fact, unfortunately, America rates highest in kidnapping as sex trafficking is at a whole all-time high. Then we have business, business owners that, that uh, steal by overpricing merchandise. And then there's this issue of gas prices <laughs> that is also theft as well. 
Um, but then we also have high interest rates for people who are uh, in need, and they know you're in need. And in fact, there's also a situation called amusement park theft. And that's when I got to pay eight bucks for a Dr. Pepper. That's called amusement park theft. They know they got you. You ain't going nowhere else. Unless you want to pay 60 bucks to get back in the park with your, with your $2 Dr. Pepper. Might as well go ahead and take the beating. Pay $5 more. We know that citizens typically like to steal because they refuse to pay taxes. People who are pushing against taxes, they, they think, oh, that's not right. The government's taking my, taking my stuff, and they are. It's called overtaxation. But remember what Jesus said, give to Caesar what's Caesar's. And uh, if the government is doing anything for us, and they are, well, let well, me talk about that later on. And, the, and, then, and then there is that type of theft where you receive too much change from the cashier. And you go, oh, the Lord's good. He blesses me, Lord. He ble- no, you, you stole it. You didn't have the ethics to turn it back in, you know. But uh, we don't want to talk about that. And then we, then we have that type of stealing where we bring home paper clips from the work, you know, and a little extra, <laughs> a little extra paper because, you know, they got so much of it up there. That's no big deal. They, it's in the budget. They got margins for that, you know, just like they got margins for the pictures at church to take home and the tables in church, you know, to take people don't bring stuff back to church. You steal it from the Lord, you know. Bring back the Lord's stuff. That pen that says Harrison Faith on it, bring it back. Bring it back. Some of y'all said, Pastor, you got a little personal there. But then there is a stealing from God. In fact, more than we want to admit, there's a lot of us that may be living in stolen houses, driving stolen cars, and wearing stolen clothes because we took his 10% and added to our 90% and paid for our life. Just so you know, 100% of the tithe does not belong to you. There is a 10% that belongs to God. In fact, I, I heard a, a story one day, and this guy said, hey, to the pastor, he said, uh, does your church tithe fairly well? He said, well, my church tithes 100%. He said, 100%? How does your church tithe 100%? He said, it's easy. He goes, 10% of them uh, tithe voluntarily, and just God takes the other 90%. It's all good. Oh, it's tough this morning. It's tough this morning. Three main areas of our life that we find both stealing and lying that present themselves in. I just want to talk about these three things today, then I'll get out of your way. As Christians, we struggle with these areas. And um, I don't know why we struggle with these areas, because we understand what Scripture says, but still yet we find ourselves, um, for some reason, falling victim to gossip, greed, and godlessness. You see, gossip is the lying on someone's character, or it's the reproduction of truth aimed at hurting the individual. Gossip is also the theft of character, because it's the intent of damaging a person's name and robbing him or her of respect in the public view. Greed is the living out of the lie that we don't have enough. Greed robs from the needy and makes ourselves out to be the sole benefactor of our gains, which we will see is not true. And then godlessness is the lie that we belong to ourselves and alone are the sole owners of our life. And it is the thieving of life away from the original owner, and that is God himself. So let's dive into this gossip thing. Proverbs 2019 uh, gives us an understanding of what gossip is or how the word reflects gossip. It says, whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. That's how, that's, that's how we say gossip nicely. Oh, they're just a simple babbler. Gossip in Scripture is referred to as slandering, and slandering is, in fact, I would say gossip is the greatest form of lying that there is. It's because gossip is bearing false witness against your neighbor. The reason gossip is the greatest form of lying is because, God, because gossip robs the victim of their character through falsifying information or even intent. Intent. You see, when someone makes an accusation against you, they are, in fact, damaging your name. And that is problematic everywhere you do life. As we look in Deuteronomy 22, 19, we'll see this same type of thing. If if a man was to accuse his wife 
of her not being faithful to the marriage, he could actually take her to the priest and they would cast lots and ask God if she was faithful or she was unfaithful. And based off that answer, if she was found faithful, even though he charged her to be unfaithful, the, the sentence to the man was this, is that he could never divorce her regardless of any action she ever made. The reason is, is because he damaged her name. He damaged her reputation and no man would take her. And so we see that this is what gossip does. That gossip uh, damages people's names. It damages their reputation. Gossip is saying, I want you to feel as bad about them as I do, regardless of why you feel that way or I feel that way. And in that sense, we are robbing someone of their character. Robbing someone of their innocence and their, in, and their, and their influence. In this way, we can misrepresent information. Uh, and, and, and still yet gossip on them, although we're not changing any of the content. So if, I ch- so if I just tell you a story, and I tell you the exact information, and I don't change, I'm not lying at all, but I am telling you the story knowing that it will cause harm to their character, that too is gossip, for I'm misrepresenting the reason why I'm telling you that. Because I'm, if I'm supposed to love my neighbor, I shouldn't be telling you stuff that's going to cause you to look harmfully upon them. And so we see this type of um, manifest of, of misrepresentation and disinformation and fabrication in the Pharisees. There were six different charges that the Pharisees came to Jesus and tried to trap him. In fact, if you look at it from a humanistic point of view, Jesus died because of uh, the trappings of the Pharisees, because of their slander against him. Uh, they, they, they often slandered him through fabrication, which is when he cast out demons by Beelzebub. They fabricated that lie. They misrepresented him with a lie when they said um, what they said concerning Caesar's coin. They tried to trap him in that, and misrepresent his, his, his loyalty to God. And then they created disinformation as they tried to um, slander him again concerning the healing on the Sabbath. But in each case, Jesus was altogether true in righteousness. And, 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 and only in a few cases did they fabricate lies. Still yet, they attempted to slander him every time they confronted him. Why would they do that? The same reason why you and I would slander or gossip on somebody. John eleven forty seven 47 through 48 says this. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? This man performs many signs. If we, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's a problem. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. So what's that, what's that risk here? Was it that he was healing people on the Sabbath? What, what, what was the real issue? The real issue was simply this. They were afraid that he was going to win over the people to truth and they would lose both their place and their nation to Jesus. What a tragic mistake. That they would lose their nation to the Messiah. I felt like that was in the scripture somewhere to happen anyway. But plain and simple, we gossip because we seek to tear down others in order to build up our place, in order to build up our nation, in order to build up our Sanhedrin so we can wear our pharisaical hats. And this way, gossip and greed really kind of agree. Because gossip and greed focus on the individual. It makes the main focus the individual. Gossip is the greed of attention. It's the greed of influence and the greed of reputation. So let's talk about greed. Greed will cause you to emphasize the material over the immaterial. Simply put, greed is a refusal to trust God to meet your needs. If if we're just being clear about it. It's the, it is the, the refusal to say, God will meet my needs, and so let me be greedy and hoard it all up. They did this greedy thing in, in Exodus as they were um, uh, in the, the wilderness, and they would, they would try to store up. Well, let me just back up. The commandment was simply this. Six days, six days you're going to gather manna. But if you gather it on the seventh day because you're so greedy, it's going to turn to ruin and to rot. And so this principle is true for us is that when we don't trust God to go out and supply all of our needs, which is somewhere in the Bible, I'm pretty sure I've heard that before, that when we don't trust him to do that, we are refusing him to be God. And this is a bigger problem 
Because when we don't trust God to be the source, we are, we are declaring a brand new truth. Not only can we not trust him to be the source, but now we declare his word to be non-authoritative and for us to meet our needs. And so now we've called God to be no longer a, a supplier, but we've also called God to not be authoritative because we're not responding to his word. And so thus, greed makes us our own God, causing us to steal because we lack contentment in life. You might say, I don't have enough money to be greedy, Pastor. But can I tell you that greed also shows up in the form of loans and unpaid debt? Oh, don't you hate it when Scripture just brings things out? You're like, oh, boy, here we go. I, I never saw this before until I started studying, and then I thought, Lord, why why'd you pick me? <laughs> why would you pick me to do this, Lord? Habakkuk 2.6 says this, Shall not all these take up their taunt against him with scoffing and riddles for him? This is talking about Babylon. Uh, or the Chaldeans, and said, Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own. For they were stealing and, and uh, um, going through the land and taking what was not theirs. For how long? Asked Habakkuk. He says, and loads himself up with pledges. That, that, that pledges simply means to borrow with the promise to repay. And you know what? That's the, that is like the epitome of American life. Because we can charge anything and everything. And so are we supposed to use credit cards, Pastor Scott? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying don't use credit cards? Are we going to have like an altar call? We all burn our credit cards today? No, no, because I'd be giving up credit cards too. It's not what you do. It's why you do it. It's the principle behind those things. And so can I tell you that buying things on credit that you can't afford and unable to pay back when you buy them, you know you can't pay it back, is a form of theft. Just because you are delaying the theft does not mean that it's no longer theft. Believing that God will give you the funds. I'm just believing God's going to help me pay for this. I know it. No, no, no. The Lord says, do not tempt the Lord your God. You are not supposed to test him in a way that you can buy something knowing you have no means to repay that and just trusting that the Lord will show up and save the day because you've not been responsible or a good steward or practice financial uh, discipline. You're not going to tempt God to cover your, your practice that way. And if you make yourself better by accumulating debt, which you know you are unable to pay, it's stealing. In fact, we look at the sin of Achan. The sin of Achan is simply this, this, this issue. Achan was all about having stuff today when he should have waited for tomorrow. Achan went into the, the first city of Jericho that they conquered, and as they conquered this city, uh, it, was, it was only to God that you couldn't take anything in this city. And the Lord said, all this stuff is mine. Don't take any of it. Consecrate it unto me. But Achan took some stuff, and he hid it in his tent. And when he did, and the Lord found out, because the Lord always finds out, it cost him him, his wife, and his families, their lives. The sad thing is this, is that if Achan would have waited, if he would have waited, he would have had way more in the promise coming to him if he'd have just let the Lord stuff alone. Because that first city the Lord said is my city, but all these other places are going to take you in the promised land. This is all your stuff. And that's the problem that we have today. You see, don't let your need for today ruin your tomorrow. Stealing is taking something for your now, but paying for it with your tomorrow. It's taking something for your now, but paying for it tomorrow. Can I tell you that jails are full of people who have ruined tomorrows because they took what they needed for today. It also applies to us outside the jails. Don't let your credit score, your pre-approved credit card, or your 60 months famous cash tempt you in lying to yourself by giving you what you need today instead of waiting for tomorrow. Because delayed theft is still theft. Don't ask God for money. Ask him for wisdom to make that money. It's better to know the source, right? They, there's a proverb somewhere. I don't sure it's, I'm not sure it's in Scripture, but they say, teach a man to fish and do what? I don't know either. I just know the... <laughs> you get the idea, right? I, I didn't want to write it down. I just want to call off my head so I could feel simple like you guys and just know what it's talking about. Greed is a lie that you need more and that God is not enough while stealing from those who are truly 
in need. Godlessness, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says this, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Godlessness is the denial of God's ownership over our bodies through misappropriation. Remember what we said, that stealing is forcibly or deceitfully appropriating the fruit of someone else's labor for yourself. So that when you and I live in such a way and we misappropriate the purpose of our life or the function of our body for things other than what he called us and redeemed us to, we are robbing God of his stuff. God is, God owns everything. Proverbs 24, or Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There's not nothing in this world that does not belong to him. So that means everything else is just management for you and I. We're just managing. We're just being good stewards. For us to deny that anything was made was not made through him is a lie. John 1, 3 says, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. For us to deny all things were created is a, is a lie as well. Colossians 1, 16 says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, with the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. So for us to appropriate Fruit of someone else's labor, such as the creating of our bodies, is stealing. For us to live in such a way that is contradictory to the commands of Scripture is stealing. And denying his authorship by stealing is the, uh, the use of his creation, our bodies, is to live as godless people do. Job says, such are the paths of all who forget God. The hope of the godless shall perish. So how important is that to us? How, how have we not been living right and 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 what impact is there do you guys remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira Ananias and Sapphira in fact is the only really capital punishment that we see other than uh uh Herod the Great um where the Lord comes down and in fact it's these two commandments that the Lord punished people with capital punishment lying and stealing this is after grace after the cross we're on into the same dispensation as you and I are in right now. And the Lord says, no, 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 no. You, you, you sold that land, and I didn't require it of you. And even after you sold the land, Peter is saying, even after you sold the land, we didn't even ask you to give what you wanted to give. But since you sold that land and determined in your heart to come and to give it, but you didn't just come and give it. You came and gave as if it was everything that you got, and, and yet you kept back some. And because you did this, you lied to the Holy Spirit. I ask myself, Lord, why was that so drastic? And can I tell you that the pride that they had for their gift robbed God by exchanging public worship for inward idolatry. Anytime we offer public worship in exchange for inward idolatry, we got problems. Because that creates not only a damage to our own self, but also notice this, it damaged the people around them. It, they, they, there was needs that were needed, and, and their lack of gift or their lack of, lack of commitment to the gift also affected other people. And so when we start to sin in these ways, and we impact other people by our sin, it's hard for the, for the Lord to turn a blind eye to. And in eyes and Sapphira, they, in lying, to the Holy Spirit, they revered themselves above the Holy Spirit. And they saw, they saw to, to gain both financially and spiritually at the same time. All at the expense of God's holiness. That is not going to work out for you or I. So what is our response? Our response is something to this. Let me just, let me just show you. If, you're, if you struggle with stealing in the past or today, let me, let me just give you the remedy. Here it is, Ephesians 4.28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor. The answer to any form of theft is work. Go to work. If you want it, go get it. The Bible condones laziness. So does my grandpa. When I was fresh out of college, I was tired because I worked two jobs and, and was trying to finish up everything. And then when I got done with all that, I just said, I'm going to rest because I'm so tired, Grandpa. And so I rested for, I don't know, it felt like two days. I think it was like two months. 
And uh, Grandpa came to me and he said, boy, don't you know what the word says? I'm living with my grandpa, by the way, at that time. And um, he says, if a man ought not work, then don't be eating my bread. <laughs> That's what he said. You ought not eat. Can I tell you, when I live with grandpa, he was tired of me stealing his water, his AC, his heat, his food. You know what I mean? And, and, and I, I know people, some of my friends who didn't grow up and they were at home and they were robbing their mom and dad of food and water and AC and heat. And so I'm going to tell you that if you're growing up, if you're, if you're old enough to get a job, go get you a job. Pay bills. Quit robbing your mom and dad's stuff. Because the second part of Paul's statement is for us who stop stealing as well. That the reason why you make uh, a paycheck is not so you can be responsible and independent. But look at Ephesians 4.28 again. It says this, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let me read that in context one more time. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands. So, right, all of this funnels down to this one thing right here. So that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Now, I don't know about you, but America didn't teach me that. America taught me to work so I can provide for myself. But the Lord says that you work so, one, you won't steal and be in contempt of the commandment. But also, your job to work is so that you may share with someone who has need. Now, let me tell you that someone who has need is someone who is unwilling to, um, someone who can't work or is in some deficit. Uh, it is not saying share it with people who won't work, right? If somebody don't work, then don't share your stuff with them. But the reason for us to stop stealing is that we may share with someone in need. Can I just further that as long as well and just say this, is that if we spend all our lives and have nothing left over living paycheck to paycheck because we've been chasing the Jones more than we've been chasing Jesus, this too is wrong. Can I just remind you that all that we do, remember our bodies don't belong to us. Our paychecks don't belong to us. Everything that you have got on your own, you did because God gave it to you. You can't process money or currency all by yourself. Whatever skill you have was his. Whatever things that you work with is his. All of it is his product and his fruit. And so it is our job to make sure that we understand that we don't own anything, but we're stewards of everything. Even the poor. This is not a popular thing to preach in America today. But we can see that all, all you ever do is spend money on yourself and you have no available resources for God to use when he needs it. Here's what the word tells us. It tells us that God's love doesn't abide in you. Mm, that's strong. That, that, that hits you hard. 1 John 3, 17 says this, But if anyone has the world's good, goods and sees his brother in need yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Wow. Acts 20, 35 says this, in all things I have shown you that by working hard in this, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can I tell you the reason why it's more blessed to give than receive is because when you give to people, you open up a channel for God to use you. And the saying goes, if God can get it through you, God can get it to you. Half the same folk people in here know how to say that word, right? So if, if he can get it through you, he'll get it to you. Because when you open that channel up, the God, know, God knows now, oh, this is the way we're going to do it. In fact, I got a friend, his mind constantly thinks that way. His mind, I, I almost wonder if he wakes up with the purpose of proving God to be wrong. But he, but he is constantly giving to the ministry. And God has made him successful far beyond he could ever imagine. But even as God continues to bless him in a monetary fashion, he is constantly finding ways to sow into the ministry. What I hear him do is simply this. He is really good at opening up channels in his life for God to flow through. And God doesn't ever give just exactly what people need. God always sends in abundance. So it's always the abundance that spills over on your life as he's getting things through you. You need to understand if you're broke, you need to open up the channels of giving. That does not make sense, Pastor Scott. You're right. It's a kingdom principle. It's not supposed to make sense. That's why the last become first and the first become last. Things are different in the kingdom. 
So you say, well, is it wrong to have, to want more? No, not at all. You can want more. But just know that when you struggle, if you struggle in the area of more, you need to ask where your contentment is. You know you're struggling with contentment when you talk about what you want while complaining about what you have. Ask yourself, where am I at in terms of contentment? See, it's all right to want, to, know, to want that new car, but make sure you thank God for that car that keeps you from walking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's important. It's all right to have to want that car, but just know that I didn't see any bus routes in Harrison. Did y'all, is there any bus routes in Harrison? Didn't see that. So it's hot outside right now. So thank God for my car, even though my AC don't work. Ain't that right, baby? Even, even though my AC don't work, I thank God I'm not walking in the heat. At least I'm driving fast in the heat, you know? Thank God for my car. I'm done today. I can tell y'all already just with me, so Destiny, come on up. Let me say this as I close. I want to take us to the cross. Luke 22, 39 through 43 says, one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him and saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him saying, do not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you today, you'll be with me in paradise. I want you to understand that nobody walks into this room hanging on the middle cross. You or I are either on the left or on the right. We're in two places. One of those two. And, and the one, I don't know, Scripture didn't say it was on the right or the left, but one, one thief hanging on the cross said, if you're the Lord, save yourself. It was, the Greek word was blasphemous. It was blasphemy. He said it in a mocking way. Save yourself, and while you're at it, save us. And the other guy said, we deserve what we get, but he doesn't deserve this at all. In fact, he knew Jesus was who he said he was, the very crime he, he was dying for. You and I have committed sins in our life, and more than likely we've committed stealing and lying somewhere. It's in our nature. I didn't have time to really get into all of that today. But what I want you to know is this, is that, that in our life we can either seek God for freedom of the consequences of life, and just hear me out. Your sins will find you out. They'll find you out. And we can either seek freedom from those consequences or we can seek forgiveness from our sins. And so today, as I've been talking, I I thoroughly believe that the Holy Spirit was pricking your heart. And maybe in terms of gossip, you said some things. You allowed some things to be said. You were told the truth, but with the intent to damage someone. Gossip is almost always prevalent in church. I've not heard any here. And it may not even be here at this church, but I just know that we struggle with that. And if you have struggled, you said something, true or false, but your intent was to harm that person. You're hanging on that cross next to Jesus today. If you trusted yourself over God for personal gain, you live with the intent of gaining life by borrowing against your means to pay. Or you lived for yourself and not with the mindset of helping those in need. You may be struggling with greed and not realizing it. And so you too might be hanging on a cross with the rest of us. Or perhaps those are not your issues at all. Perhaps I might kindly say you forgot that your body is not your own. That your plans are not your own and your purposes are not your own. But that you've been bought with the precious blood of Christ. And the truth that sets you free 
from your old master is also the truth that demands a life in full. You can't partake in Christ's death unless you also give yourself over to his life living in you. And so this morning, here's what I want to do. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. No one looking around. No one looking around. I want to pray with you. I've already prayed through myself personally. But I want to pray for you. I want to ask, is the Holy, is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Because his role is to not condemn you. What he's trying to do right now is to sanctify you. To make you better than you are currently. To make you more like the sun. Raising our hand is not a moment of confession and admission to our guilt. It is that. But really it's our way of saying, I need to be more like Christ and less like me. I release, I release hold of my life and I embrace his desire. And so the Lord has been speaking to you. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to you. No one's looking around. Raise your hand. Let me see who I'm praying for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Father in heaven, Lord, you see not only hands, but hearts. When we stand before you, Lord, we don't want to remember this day, which was a hard truth. And I pray, God, that you've not come just to convict us, but, oh, God, I pray also that you would give us the wisdom to know how to change and the strength to change. All of that, God, is dependent upon you. And so we ask, God, this morning, Father, that you would change our hearts, God, because we want to be contributors to this body, this community of believers, God. And I know that the enemy desires to have us, God. He's at the door of this church waiting for us. I pray, God, this morning, Lord, as we have submitted ourselves as vessels to you, God, that you would know absolutely that we desire you above all else and that we ask for change. We ask for change. We thank you. We bless you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is God good? Is God good? Amen. Amen. You still love me? <laughs> good, because... Sometimes I just feel like, Lord, I wish you would love somebody else <laughs> to preach your truth because uh, this ain't fun. Let me just remind you as you walk out of here. If you were a thief like me, pay it back if you can. Pay it back. Restitution is biblical. Make sure you confess your sins and then ask God to repent, change your heart. It's important to do so.